Hi everyone, today we're going to be solving AQA, GCAC Chemistry, Higher Tier, Paper 2. Today we're solving June 2020. In this particular question paper, we're going to be solving from question number 6 to question number 10. This is a part 2 of the series. This question is about atmospheric pollution. Figure 3 shows limestone carving, which has been damaged by atmospheric pollution. The carving has been blackened by the soot eroded where the limestone has reacted with atmospheric pollutants. We can see the soot has caused the particular carving to become black in color and we can see eroded limestone. Explain why soot is formed when fossil fuels are burned. Soot is formed due to incomplete combustion of fossil fuel, all right, because there were insufficient amount of oxygen present during the burning process. Fossil fuels are burnt in car engines. Explain how reducing the amount of sulfur in fossil fuels reduces the erosion of limestone. Sulfur in the fossil fuel reacts with oxygen during the combustion process to form sulfur dioxide. So if sulfur is removed from fossil fuel, then less sulfur dioxide is emitted by the car's exhaust. And as a result, less acid rain is produced. So, less limestone will react with the acid rain. Oxides of nitrogen are atmospheric pollutants which are formed in car engines. Explain why oxides of nitrogen are formed in car engines. Inside the car engine, the engine works at a very high temperature. So, the engine combines the nitrogen from the air with the oxygen in a reaction at high temperature. This question is about carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids belong to a homologous series. Table 3 shows information about the first three carboxylic acids in this homologous series. We can see methanoic acid. The formula is missing. So the methanoic acid formula will be HCOOH. And then ethanoic acid. And then the next one, we can see there are three carbons, meaning that this is propanoic acid. Ethanoic acid ionizes in water. The equation for the reaction is ethanoic acid turning into ethanoate ion and hydrogen ion. Explain how the equation show that ethanoic acid is a weak acid. In this particular equation, we can already see that there is a reversible sign. The reversible sign shows that there is a partial ionization. A student adds a solution of ethanoic acid to zinc carbonate in an open flask on a balance. Explain what happens to the mass of the flask and its content during the reaction. When zinc carbonate reacts with the acid, ethanoic acid, it produces carbon dioxide. So, the mass of the flask and the content will decrease because the carbon dioxide that is produced will escape from the flask and as a result, the mass will decrease. The student compares the rate of reaction of zinc carbonate with 0 0.01 mole per dm cube methanoic acid, 0 0.01 mole per dm cube ethanoic acid. The rate of the reaction that methanoic acid with methanoic acid is greater than the rate of the reaction with ethanoic acid. Explain why. All right, we should refer to the ions in our answer. So 0 0.01 mole per dm cube methanoic acid has a lower pH compared to that of 0 0.01 mole per dm cube of ethanoic acid. 0 0.01 mole per dm cube methanoic acid has a higher concentration of hydrogen ions because it has a lower pH and thereby it will have more collisions per unit time with the zinc carbonate molecules and as a result the rate of reaction will be faster. Ethanoic acid reacts with ethanol to produce an ester. Give the name of the ester produced when ethanoic acid reacts with ethanol. To name an ester from the ethanol and the ethanoic acid that it is produced from, the ethanol will give the first part of the name which is ethyl and the second part of the name will come from the acid which is ethanoate. Hexendioic acid and ethendiol join together to produce a polyester. Ethanoic acid and ethanol join together in the same way to produce an ester. What is the displayed structural formula of the ester produced when ethanoic acid reacts with ethanol? First of all, it's going to be an ester. So, this is not an ester. Neither this is an ester. Neither this is an ester. So, only this is an ester. So, ethyl ethanoate. This is the fastest way you can encounter it. This one is a ketone because of the CO double bond. This one is an ether because of the COO bond. And this one is an alcohol because of the OH bond. 
This question is about the rate of the reaction between hydrochloric acid and calcium carbonate. A student investigated the effect of changing the size of calcium carbonate lumps on the rate of this reaction. This is the method used. Pour 40 cm cube of hydrochloric acid into a conical flask. Add 10 gram of small calcium carbonate lumps to the conical flask. Attach a cast syringe to the conical flask. Measure the volume of gas produced every 30 seconds for 180 seconds. Repeat steps 1 to 4 using 10 grams of large calcium carbonate lumps. The student calculated the number of moles of gas from each volume of gas measured. We can see time was measured up until 180 and number of moles of gas up until 0 0.004. The student plotted the results for small calcium carbonate lumps on figure 4. Now, they asked us to complete the figure 4, plot the data for large calcium carbonate lumps from table 4, and draw a line of best fit. Because the maximum amount produced is 0 0.0040, so we will just extend the line. Determine the mean rate of reaction for small calcium carbonate lumps between 20 seconds and 105 seconds. So to determine the mean rate of reaction of small calcium carbonate lumps, we will extrapolate at 20 seconds and our value will be 0 0.0038. And then we will extrapolate at 105 seconds, our value will be 0 0.0014. Then we are going to calculate 0 0.0038 minus 0 0.0014 divided by 105 minus 20. This will give us the time and as a result we'll get the gradient which will give us 0 0.000028 or 2.8 into 10 to the power of minus 5 moles per second. The student concluded that the large calcium carbonate lumps reacted more slowly than the small calcium carbonate lumps. How do the student's results show that this conclusion is correct? So for large lumps, a smaller number of moles of gas is collected in the same amount of time. Or we can say the line of best fit for the large lump is less steep. Or we can say the large lumps, for the large lumps, more time is needed to collect the same number of moles of gas. The difference in the rates of reaction of large lumps and of small lumps of calcium carbonate depends on the surface area to volume ratio of the lumps. Figure 5 shows a cube of calcium carbonate, which is 0 0.5 cm on the sides. Calculate the surface area to volume ratio of the cube in Figure 5. Give your answer as the simplest whole number ratio. So to calculate the surface area, we have to multiply 6 sides with 0 0.5 into 0 0.5. This gives us 1.6 cm square. And for the volume, we'll multiply all 3 sides. 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 which gives us a volume of 0 0.125 cm cube. When we do the surface area is to volume ratio, we find 12 is to 1. A larger cube of calcium carbonate has sides of 5 cm. Describe how the surface area to volume ratio of this larger cube differs from that of the cube shown in figure 5. You know, it has a side of 5 cm. The surface area to volume ratio decreases by a factor of 10. This question is about algae. A student placed algae in water containing dissolved carbon dioxide. Shown bright light on the algae, gas bubbles were collected as the algae photosynthesized. Describe the test that would identify the gas that is collected. Give the result of the test. So when we have photosynthesis, we produce oxygen. So in this case, the test will be to use a glowing splint and the result will be the glowing splint will relight because of the oxygen. Glucose is produced when algae photosynthesize. Name two naturally occurring polymers produced from glucose. So glucose, when it is polymerized, it produces either starch or it produces cellulose molecule. Figure 6 shows the displayed formula of an amino acid called glycine. We can see the amino part, we can see the carboxylic acid, and the middle carbon. How many functional groups are there in the molecule of figure 6? So we can see two functional groups. Glycine reacts by condensation polymerization to produce a polypeptide and one other substance. So a condensation polymerization in living organism always produces water. Scientists think that algae may have used gases in Earth's early atmosphere. Algae need an element to produce the molecule in figure 6, which is not present in the water or carbon dioxide. Which two gases from Earth's early atmosphere could have provided this element? So in terms of figure 6, in figure 6 we can see that there is nitrogen. 
However, algae is unable to use nitrogen directly, so it must use it in the form of ammonia. Guys, other accepted answer will be nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, or any other oxides of nitrogen. The development and function of algae are controlled by a naturally occurring polymer. Figure 7 represents the shape and structure of the polymer. Describe the shape and structure of this polymer. In the diagram, we can see that this is a molecule of DNA. And a molecule of DNA is made from two polymer chains. And we know that DNA is made from four types of nucleotides. So we can say that this polymer is made from four different monomers or four different types of nucleotides. For example, it can be C, G, A, T. And also we can see the structure is double helix. Yeah. This question is about a reversible reaction. The reaction between solutions of iron 3 and the thiocyanate SCN- is reversible. The ionic equation for the reaction is Fe3+, which is yellow in color, reacts with thiocyanate, which is colorless, and produces a ligand of thiocyanate 2+, which has a red color. The color of the equilibrium mixture is orange at room temperature. Give the name of the solvent used to dissolve the ions in this reaction. So we can see aqueous, so we'll say water. A few drops of colorless solution containing a high concentration of thiocyanate ions are added to the orange equilibrium mixture. Explain the color change that is observed. When we are going to add the thiocyanate ions, the equilibrium mixture will shift towards the right, which will produce more red because it increases the concentration of thiocyanate ions, all right, uh, iron thiocyanate ions and uh, the equilibrium wants to decrease the concentration of the thiocyanate ions. A water bath is set up at temperature above room temperature. When a test tube containing orange equilibrium mixture is placed in the water bath, the mixture becomes more yellow. Explain what this shows about the energy changes for the forward reaction. So we are placing it at high temperature and we see more yellow. So the reaction is reversing at high temperature. That means the reverse reaction is endothermic because endothermic reactions are favored by high temperature. The forward reaction is exothermic. So we will answer it in this way. The position of the equilibrium shifts to the left so that the increase in temperature is reduced by the endothermic reaction, which is the reverse reaction. And therefore the forward reaction is definitely exothermic. Explain why a change in pressure does not affect the color of the equilibrium mixture. A change in pressure does not affect a particular reaction that is in aqueous. If there would be a gas present, then that would be affected and as a result, the position of the equilibrium could have changed. However, since there is no gas present, so there is no change in equilibrium position. Other metal ions form colored equilibrium mixtures with thiocyanate ions. Which metal ion could form a colored equilibrium mixture with thiocyanate ion? Whenever a question like this is asked, always remember about transition metals. So, aluminium, magnesium and sodium, they are not transition metals. Cobalt will be the answer. Guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you for joining this particular video, guys. Best of luck with your exams. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye.